Hi, this is Edgar, and I'm welcoming you to my Earth Radio VLF Scientific Professional Edition VLF Natural Radio Receiver Operating Guide. As you can see, the front panel is pretty simple. We have a standard on-off volume control. And, uh, let's see if I can get here. Yeah, you can see the peak LED flash when you turn the unit on. Turn the volume up. Okay, that's just internal noise. The sensor is not connected at this time. It uses a dual banana plug. It plugs in a pair of banana jacks on the back. Peak LED shows when the preamp is overloading. On lightning spherics from nearby lightning, say lightning, oh, 100 to 200 miles away, uh, it needs to be the point at which the peak LED just comes on. If you have the sensitivity turned up higher than that, you won't be able to have volume increase as the lightning gets closer. Uh, later, we'll show you on the back panel the gain adjustment. The gain adjustment allows you to turn the sensitivity way up so that in the winter time when there's no lightning nearby, you can get sensitivity to hear the whistlers and the tweaks and the other VLF noises that you cannot hear in the summertime. So what we do is in the winter we operate at full gain like it's set right now. In summer we turn it way down to where the lightning, oh the most sensitive you'd want it is for your lightning at 300 miles away and uh, that is in the sensitive directions of the of the loop sensor and I'll show you later on which directions are sensitive. Uh, Nevertheless, you want the nearest, you want the lightning to, to, to light the peak indicator at 100 to 300 miles out. And anything more sensitive than that will make a lot of noise and it will be pr pretty much a nuisance. So that's basically it for the front panel. We'll pause here. Okay, we'll go ahead and do the back panel. The main source of power is the 120 volt standard house current, 120 volt 60 hertz AC power. This unit uh, consumes about 5 watts so it's really pretty harmless to leave it on continuously. No problem, you can leave it on and monitor lightning and earth noises uh, just continuously. Now, it has battery backup. We have a fairly simple but effective battery holder and then the 9 volt snap. Battery can be used two ways. It can be used to operate the unit portable while you're walking around the house or wherever you're going to put your sensor. Uh, your sensor it'll need to be probably 20 feet from any television or any computer monitor and per probably about the same distance from any microwave or other major appliance. Uh, you may even wish to use an outdoor loop which uh, I can provide information on either how to adapt this one for the outside use or how to build a simple but very sensitive outdoor loop. And uh, have the input, like I said before, they're banana jacks, and they will accept the dual banana plug from whatever sensor that you do use with it. It's a 100 ohm balanced input, so it likes a multi turn small loop like the one that's supplied with it, or even a large outdoor single turn loop of several square feet of aperture area and it has a has a 10 to 1 well it has a 5 it has a 125 to 10k step up transformer in it and uh, it, it does well with small loops and single turn loops the gain control is a fairly delicate uh, printed circuit board mounted potentiometer and it'll have to be approached with some tenderness and, and care. First of all, even though the slots are crossed, they do not accept a Phillips screwdriver. You have to use a flat blade screwdriver with a eighth inch wide tip in order to adjust it. It's marked right now, it's at full clockwise and I turn it to about halfway so you can see the mark move. Okay, now it's about halfway so you can see the little dot on the uh, rotating disc part of it. Basically, uh, wintertime operation, you use it about full, about full open. 
summertime would probably work out about here. You'll have to test it yourself with, with lightning and use uh, on the internet the Vaisala Thunderstorm Portal or even uh, the Web Flash, which is the Worldwide Lightning Location Networks uh, International and World Lightning Maps. So you can use the online services to determine where your lightning is and how far it is away in order to set your sensitivity. Like I said before, in the summertime you wouldn't want it set more sensitive than than enough sensitivity to make the peak indicator flash with lightning 300 miles away. And if you want a quiet, no nuisance receiver, you might even set it tight enough to where lightning has to be 100 miles or closer to make the peak indicator flash. That'll keep it quiet and yet you can still hear the storms approaching from pretty good ways off. So that's pretty much how you operate the receiver. And uh, I'll pause for a second. We'll set it up so I can demonstrate how to null the loop. The word null, N-U-L-L, -L, comes from the German word null, which means zero. So what we're going to do is uh, demonstrate how to set the loop for minimum hum pickup indoors. This is a mini loop sensor. It's a coil. It's a made inside of three-quarter inch PVC water pipe. On the elbows, we cut the elbows into what I call half shells so that the wire can be threaded through. This particular one, I'm using 26 gauge four conductor telephone station wire inside for the winding. I have seven turns and each of the four conductors are connected in series with each other. So I effectively have a 28 turn loop. Now, the line cord is three line telephone extension jack cord. It's pretty resistive so I'm using all I'm using uh, two sets of three conductors in parallel on it and uh, it offers a total resistance of about 14 ohms. So it works well on the scientific professional model. I wouldn't really recommend this style of construction for the standard model of receiver. Standard model a uh, person may want to use two conductor 20 gauge speaker wire inside the loop and maybe 20 gauge speaker wire or even 18 gauge lamp cord for the cord. This, case, this cord happens to be about 50 feet long and 30 feet to 50 feet is usually optimum on a loop. Now the loop obviously you can change the horizontal direction or the bearing but this one I left the joints on the T left them uncemented so it can also be adjusted in this plane. You grab it by the top center and hold the back leg down and the tilt or azimuth angle can also be adjusted and as you'll see shortly when I demonstrate knowing the loop indoors at the kitchen table you'll be able to see just how effective the tilt function is it's pretty handy and it, it helps get rid of quite a bit of the hum as well so here we go if I do it in less than 10 minutes we can also post this part on YouTube first we'll take the tilt and adjust it to where it's almost completely vertical and we'll go ahead and we'll do the horizontal bearing angle okay that's about as quiet as it gets in that direction Let's see the tilt yeah that's pretty close especially with the receiver that close it tends to pick up part of the interference from the power transformer in the receiver and home a little bit. Look at that, we just caught a tweak. Okay, that's about it. We're going to have to cut it short. But we are getting uh, lightning spirits from a good 600 miles southeast. And we did catch a tweak. That's basically how, how you go about operating this unit. And the rest of the videos that follow will be technical. So God bless you and thank you for watching. Bye.